I got shit all over my glasses. I got shit all over my glasses. Did you do it? I don't know if this is a compliment or an insult. Does it really look that bad? Thank you, ish, I think. I don't know, I think that was a that was an insult. Okay. You know, up here in the Midwest, we get our news late, which means we're talking about Donut Media and their high-low car series, which ended up resulting in everybody in the Subaru community getting pissed off. Very angry, very upset. There was a lot of upset, angry, younger males that were really threatening everyone in the comments as to why Subarus aren't bad cars and Donut Media just has no idea what they're doing. Do you think that these are made out of the same material? Well, I don't know. I went out and I talked to Donut Media and a couple of those guys. I went out and I talked to some Subaru people, the ones that know everything about this platform to figure out what's going on in their heads as well. And I think I've cracked the case because what Donut Media showed with their high-low series with Subaru is exactly what everyone fears, both if you're a Subaru enthusiast or if you don't like them because you're scared of them. And a lot of people are scared of them right now. So I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram. I am wearing a Flamingo t-shirt to keep things light and fresh and easy because it's negative 15 degrees outside and I don't need anybody in the comments raising a stink. But if you wanna join the Discord, feel free to do so, subscribe. But the biggest thing I need from you is I want you to drop your thoughts in the comments below as I walk through why I think I found out the true root cause problem with this Subaru dilemma. So when we get into this, is important, okay? I'm here to share the news, the automotive journalism that doesn't suck ass. The story. Donut Media did a high-low series. It's where they compare two cars, they put one with high parts, expensive parts, one with cheap parts that kind of are shit, and they run them both at the same time, and they see if it makes a difference. It's a really cool concept. I've loved it since the 350Z series that they've done, and I love that James and Nolan and Jeremiah and all those guys get together, Ryan and then the, the whole team get together for this series, because they're an awesome group of people. I met them before, we've worked with them before, I talked to them before, before, they're all fantastic people. Anyway, they bought a 2005-2006 Subaru WRX with the EJ255. They talk about how the car that they bought had a rebuilt engine, they rebuilt it again, took it out on the track, blew up after 200 miles. Keep this in mind. Then, got it back, rebuilt it, figured out what was wrong with it, sent it back out with a rebuilt motor, blew up again. Technically the third one, because the first car that they bought, they said that it was just freshly rebuilt. Then, they took high car out, they crashed it. When they crashed it, the engine failed, again. So then they bought another high car and they put all of high car parts onto the new high car. And when they were taking off the exhaust and they were revving it and then they did an oil change, they noticed there were metal shavings in the engine. So then they had to do another motor rebuild. They're on five motors with three cars. That doesn't even make any sense. Okay, and here's the big problem with the whole concept, right? As this started to unfold, you can very clearly see that the donut squad is getting very upset. And to be honest, I would also get angry as well. They're going through and trying to build two cars and they can't for the life of them keep a single one alive longer than 200 miles. And to watch them go through this, you can very clearly see that they did not enjoy the platform at all. So much so that they make fun of it the entire time. So you get all these people that come out of the woodwork to talk smack about Subaru because Donut's talking smack about Subaru. And at the end of the series, they finally get to a head, the series closes and the Subaru community is irate. And a lot of people came out of the woodwork talking a lot of shit about Donut Media for not knowing what they're doing. So before we get into this, I wanna give credit to a couple people because on the Subaru side, I watched a couple videos from Flatirons Tuning, really enjoyed the way they talked about it. I wanna give another shout out to Mr. Subaru 1387. He definitely leans on the Subaru side. He definitely leans more towards Donut not knowing what they're doing, but I still did enjoy some of the things that he called out and he also showed the products and the parts and why they fail, which I thought was really interesting. I also wanna give a shout out to Jeremiah for talking to me for a little bit. I know that I annoyed the shit out of him when trying to reach out to him. And I also wanna give a shout out to Tanner Smith's media. I talked to him the most out of everyone on the Subaru side. So shout out to those guys. I'll put them in the comments in the description below because they're on the Subaru side, but they were still super helpful. Anyway, when I go into this, the, the technical problems of the Subaru seem to be this because going through three cars and five engines is a little excessive in my opinion. Stock oil pans are really bad. A turbocharged car that is built as a world rally championship style off-road capable vehicle has oil pans that don't have any baffling because if the oil sloshes back and forth it uh, i don't understand that problem 
from Subaru, first off, okay? I get it, it's a known problem. Doesn't change the fact that it's a stupid issue. Number two, oil pump. This is mentioned before, there's, there's oil pump issues. There's also like a connecting rod with the oil. Mr. Subaru talked about street parts versus race parts and that because they're driving it on a track, he would recommend different parts that wouldn't have failed that the street parts did fail. I'm not so sure I agree with that. A lot of the times when you're looking at street parts from name brands, they're usually what I would call like a hybrid part. They're gonna work 99% of the time, 95% of the time, I would say. When you really start getting to thoroughbred race-only parts for race-only applications, sure, there's gonna be a difference. It's gonna be bulletproof. It's also gonna cost three times as much and it's gonna be a pain in the ass to actually use on the streets. So I don't really know if switching just to straight race parts would have been like a realistic solution for the donut team. And then, you have the ring lands, you have the oil consumption issues, you have all that sort of stuff. You have the crappy interior, you have the weird fenders, you have the thing that rusts all the time, at least up here in the Midwest. Subarus aren't perfect. And I'm not saying all of that stuff to bag on them. I still think they're a great platform when they're done well, when they're built right. They look great. I, I give them all the credit where credit is due. But there are a few issues with the platform. And as Donut continued to kind of break down these issues because they didn't know any better, they just kept running into them, people started to call them out. Finally, they caught on, but regardless of the point, as the Subaru community started to realize that Donut had no idea what they were doing, they said that Donut wasn't experienced. But the things that they were claiming were the problems were pretty sophisticated situations. Like I get the oil baffle issue, but there were other things too. There was a lot more to the platform that I think Donut was prepared to jump into, but that does not determine the failure of what seems to be five motors, right? It also doesn't make sense that an oil starvation issue would continuously happen over and over and over. And even after they have the new oil baffle in, they still had a failure. To which the Subaru community responded with, oh, well, we don't know if that's the right baffle. We don't know what other mods are on it. We don't know. So it's not the car's fault, it's Donut's fault. It's so quick to point to Donut instead of pointing to the platform. Now. I'm not going to say that Donut did everything perfect because we know that we didn't. But the point that you're watching this video is not for that. The point that I'm trying to make is it goes past Subaru versus Donut Media. It goes way past that. And it goes to the actual like purpose of the car. Let me explain. When you go into vehicles that you can buy that are affordable, that are all wheel drive, that are turbo four cylinders, they're MAF powered, you have like, five options. You had like three back in 2008. You had the Subaru platform, you had a Volkswagen Audi platform of some kind, and then you had whatever the f Dodge was making that was either weird or wonky, but always came in the wrong driving configuration. It was always front wheel drive shit. It was always the weirdest stuff. Anyway, you didn't really have a whole lot of options. And Subaru killed it in terms of making an affordable, easy to jump into, manual, all wheel drive, symmetrical all wheel drive, turbo four. Everybody bought them. When I was 16, I also wanted one because they sounded fantastic and they still sound fantastic. The engine layout's cool, the exhaust is wild, everything about it was a dream to me. But the problem is, is they were super, super affordable. And you had people building them right and you had people building them wrong. The people that built them wrong probably would have survived if they had bought a different platform. You're talking about something that requires greater knowledge because it has a lower tolerance to missing the mark than other cars in the same market that do the same thing. That is the key difference here that really, I think, stands out to me. It's not the fact that they use Tane coilovers on high car. It's pronounced Tane if anybody gives a shit. Right? Tanes? <laughs> It's not the fact that, sure, they crashed it or they didn't do the rebuild or for some reason it's they don't have any history on the old car, so that must mean that the previous owners did it wrong. I don't think that's the case at all. I think that Subarus as a whole have this tendency where if you own it and you build it and you know everything about it, your car is fine. But the moment you take somebody else's project where maybe they didn't do it exactly how you did it, maybe they cut a corner, maybe they changed some things out, maybe they did a rebuild, but they didn't clean every single nook and cranny and scan every single oil can and, and every crevice possible, and the tiniest little sliver gets back in there and it causes a detonation again, it causes a failure. That sort of stuff is what's leaked this bad reputation of Subaru out because the cars cannot take, they do not have, the same amount of tolerance as other cars. You wouldn't see an FDRX7 owner looking you in the eyes and saying it's just as simple, just as easy, and just as coherent to build a rotary engine as it is to build a V8. You just wouldn't. And if you do, and if you hear that, it's usually because they know so much about the car now that to them, it's like just breathing. They just get it, they just know it, and to them, it's simple. But it doesn't change the fact that it is harder. It is a greater field of knowledge to jump into. It requires more work. And that is where the Subaru sits. I would compare like an 
EJ255 or even the earlier gens, the EJ25 or whatever it is, to like a B5 S4 Audi. If you guys remember the Nagaro Blue, the Imola Yellow, that is like the most beautiful Audi in my opinion. It's the most gorgeous example of that Audi ever made. But if you remember the 2.17, you remember the six-speed transmission, when you went stage three, you did any modifications to them, they were very finicky. They were so finicky that every single time you made a slight change, you had to always go and get a tune. It required so much work that if you did have it right, it was the best car ever. But if you f***ed up the slightest little thing or you cheaped out on it or you avoided something or you neglected it with a check engine light, a lot of times that car bit back. And when it did bite back, it was expensive and it usually resulted in most Audi owners crying. But the difference between a B5 S4, a Mola Yellow with 60,000 miles, and a 2005 Subaru WRX is there's like 12 of those left, and there's 50,000 of this one over here. And the B5 S4 is $35,000 now, and a 2006 Subaru WRX is still like six grand in some places. So people are jumping into this platform expecting the same. They're expecting to be able to just jump in and do the same amount of knowledge, have the same amount of knowledge, have the same amount of modification history, and just do it the same way. And you can't. You can't, you shouldn't, you won't. The people that are experienced on the Subaru platform would say the very same thing. Now they're not saying it's a bad platform. It's still a good platform, but it requires more info. And not everybody's up for learning that. A lot of times they buy a Subaru, it fails them. They don't wanna go through spending money on it. They give it to the next person. And when somebody asks how their experience was with buying a Subaru WRX, a lot of them say it was shit because the previous owner rebuilt it wrong or they rebuilt it wrong and it blew up and they sold it. Whatever it is, that threshold of the amount of people that had good experience with building them versus the bad experience is growing. And that's why the experts, the people like Tanner and those guys are so awesome because they do know everything about the platform. But it doesn't change the fact that for everybody else, the normal automotive enthusiast, the everyday guy or gal that's just looking to jump into something light, maybe as a first turbocharged car, second turbocharged car, and they see this thing about Subaru and they get scared, there's likely a reason. I don't want to throw shade at the platform and I don't think anybody should throw shade at the platform. It's not the enthusiast problem or the community's problem. It's not Donut's problem. It's just that I don't think anybody's willing to admit that Subarus are harder to work on than what people think. But that's just what I think. So what do you think? Let me know below. I'm Alex, Alex Armour TV with two underscores on Instagram. Again, thank you to Donut. I really appreciate those guys. They're awesome people. Jeremiah, Nolan, James, Ryan, all of you guys are fantastic. I love the series. Please keep going. To all the people over on the Subaru community, you guys are also awesome too. Tanner, thank you. Specifically Tanner, thank you so much on sharing literally all of this information. Super good guy, came from the Nissan community, went over into the Subaru communities. You guys will have to check them out. If you are a big Subaru fan, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you guys later. Adios.